So, a few years ago, Nvidia released a first test of Nvidia Gangan. It was astonishingly beautiful and Stroke 2 landscape became an excitement for all. The following months, we explored Stroke to 3D, which changed how we saw 3D creation for a while. Everyone was excited, and at the time, we could only dream of text to image, which eventually happened with diffusion tools like Stable Diffusion, Dali E, Mid Journey, and the likes. These diffusion models have made their way into 3D and 2D tools, changing what we think is art and how to create one. As much as everyone was excited about these diffusion Diffusion tools that created images from text, the new implementation of Stable Diffusion in Blender for creating seamless textures and also implementation in tools like Krita and Photoshop for quickly creating artworks and optimizing artworks created in these tools only intensified the pulsing thoughts that we've always had. We all knew that it was a matter of time when text to 3D would be here and this is happening today. And with all of these developments happening sequentially and rapidly, AI is definitely changing how 3D art would be made now and also in the future. And the brand new paper from DreamFusion changes everything. DreamFusion text to 3D using 2D diffusion is here and is taking AI text to artwork generation to the third dimension. At this point, this seems to be one of the best approaches that takes a text prompt and carefully creates a full 3D representation with text and some form of dynamic lighting. This does all of this in one take. Although Nvidia already has something going on like this, and in the past days they did release the Nvidia Get 3D. The Get 3D from Nvidia takes a look at the diffusion based 2D models and creates a 3D mesh with it. Actually, the description states that we generate a 3D SDF, which is a sign distance field and a texture field via two talent codes. We utilize the DM text to extract 3D surface meshes from the sign distance field and query the texture field at surface point to get colors. We train with adversarial losses defined in 2D images. In particular, we use the rasterization based differentiable renderer to obtain RGB images and silhouettes. We utilize two 2D discriminators each own RGB image and silhouette respectively. And this is to classify whether the inputs are real or fake and the whole model is end-to-end -end trainable. And if you ask me, this is a wonderful way to go about it. I will personally want to experiment and give this a shot as it's super interesting that we've come to the point where you can just simply use a simple image and generate a 3D model. Although this isn't Nvidia's first rodeo with pushing the limits of what image and 3D can do as they've already made some advancements with Nvidia Nef, which was announced a few months back, which is still groundbreaking till today. And there is also a sim tool that they've already created for Omniverse for characters and props generation which is definitely revolutionary. And I believe all of this have led to the birth of Nvidia Get 3D and in one way or the other these developments has either influenced or contributed to Dream Fusion. And the interesting thing about Nvidia's Get 3D is the isolation of models. Just like what you can get with PNG and JPEG images, most of the models generated with Get 3D are very simple and single 3D models that doesn't have backgrounds. Most of the backgrounds are very simple backgrounds as well, which like we mentioned earlier is revolutionary. But when you now get to compare this to what Dream Fusion actually brings to the table, the text to 3D disparities just simply blows these two apart. So amongst these two, it is pretty visible to see where Dream Fusion takes the cake for this one. And either tools that you get to work with, this will definitely change the creation of 3D contents in the future. DreamFusion is made by Google Research in conjunction with UC Berkeley and this uses text to image generation model called ImageGen to optimize a 3D model. In recent times, we've also seen text to image synthesis, which have been driven by diffusion models trained on billions of image text pairs and adapting this approach to 3D synthesis will require a large scale dataset of labels, 3D assets and efficient architecture for denoising the 3D data and neither of these currently exists. So what the folks at Google Research and UC Berkeley are proposing is the score distillation sampling. The score distillation sampling is a way to generate samples from a diffusion model by optimizing a loss function. The score distillation sampling allows them to optimize samples in an arbitrary parameter space such as a 3D space as long as they can map back to the images differentiably. They also get to use the 3D sim parameterization similar to Nvidia's neural radiance field. This is to help define differentiable mappings and the score distillation sampling alone produces reasonable scene appearances but Dream Fusion adds an extra level of optimization strategies to improve the geometry and give a better result in 3D model with high quality normals, surface geometry and depth. And all of these models are lightable and they do come with Lambert as their default shader. So if we take a look at the website, you would notice that we have some very interesting things going on. So by default, 
you can see how the text generation looks like. It's quite interesting to see that directly on the website, you can do some very amazing things. If we choose to play with some of the samples that they've given up here, you will be able to see that you can just simply click on the text and automatically, some way, somehow, this generates the 3D image. So all of this that you're seeing are text prompts that have already been converted to 3D images, which is super interesting. So we can choose a different kind of sample and you can see that and we can also switch to the kimono say we would like a character to have that we would like that to have a medieval you know stuff you can see that so this is more like for the character itself let's do a dslr image so you can see that and we can also make the character read some books and you know currently these models are not available for downloading but right now you can experiment with them we can have this one building a katana probably we should change this uh, let's change the outfit and see Oh, this looks beautiful. We can make that elegant one as well. Let's make this eat some hamburger. And uh, it's quite interesting what this is looking like right now. We can do a highly detailed sculpt one and you can play with that. Something else which is also very interesting is you have loads of stuff going on here. You can check these things out. If you like to see these meshes and see what they look like in 3D, you can see them. You know, all of these ones that we've been playing with, they are all rendered. And it's pretty easy to say these things have been rendered, but you can't really tell the difference. You can rotate this in 3D, but this is where it starts becoming interesting. Here's a frog wearing a sweater. We can click on load model and the model loads and we can preview this. Just think about all of the possibilities. You just put a text prompt and then a 3D model appears. And this is going to be very useful for game artists trying to create props and also for 3D artists looking for base meshes that they want to create things with. Now, initially, we did talk about the fact that you cannot download any of this. So these ones are not available for you to get, but it starts getting interesting when you go over to mesh export. So right here, you can actually download this ones. So we did download a couple of them and you can open them up. These are GLB files, which you can use, of course. So how you can download this is a little bit interesting. Especially if you're, you know, thinking about getting things like the this, maybe you just want to get them, you want to preview them, or maybe you just want to use them. You want to confirm the fact that these actually works. Yes, you can. So to do this is very simple. You probably know a little bit of HTML, but if you don't, I'm just going to show you guys what to do. So if you want to get, for example, this, you can. So you can just simply right click, go all the way to where you have inspect. And once you do that, there is definitely a section called model viewer. So you have to go over to the model viewer section. And from here, you can right click, go to this section and simply copy, go over to the new tab, paste it and the GLB file downloads. And you can open this in any 3D app of choice and play with it. Now, I do not know what licensing they have for this, but I kind of believe that this should be fully open source and it should be available for anyone to use because right now it's available in the most open source format. So you should be able to, to get this. This is for those thinking about exploring with the 3D, you want to see what the fidelity looks like, but whatever you get to say, I guarantee you this is super interesting. Like the fact that we are getting this from a simple prompt, a simple text, and it's creating an entire 3D model with textures and all that is just super interesting. But things actually get even way more wild when you go over to the gallery. So right here in the gallery, there's just a, a lot of things. I think that we have a lot of things to unpack. So when we looked at the, the simple project, if we scroll back all the way to the section, you get to notice that there's literally nothing too different with what we saw with the NVIDIA Get 3D. These things are isolated. They have good textures, very simple models. Let's get this to run. Let's get this to run. You know, very simple models. And it doesn't look too different from what we already talked about with NVIDIA. Contrary to what we just looked at, the things happening here are pretty complex. So we've already seen some very simple ones, but if you take a look at an astronaut riding a kangaroo, you can tell that we have two separate models. They are not intersecting each other. The textures are not intersecting each other. And this just happens all through. So if we go all the way down and we're looking at a good drinking beer, you can also tell that the geometry is separate. The object itself is separate. You can see the hair there as well, the texturing. In no way, shape or form are these things intersecting. And it goes for, for every single thing. You want to have two different boots. You can see them. The cowboy boots are there. Cruel painting or doing something like that. This is also right there. You're trying to get some flames, some volcanic thing. You can find that. They've also found a way to cheat through certain things. Or should I say that the renderer just finds a way of, of dealing with this. 
Like we mentioned earlier, this makes use of the Lambert shading. You can relight this and the texturing is just right there. To the best of my knowledge, I think this is the best so far that we've come in terms of AI generating things like this. So if we keep scrolling all the way down, actually you can see the styling is also looking very nice. This is an origami of a motorbike. In terms of clothing as well, this also handles the draping, the, the way the clothes actually fall off. So it does, it does a very good job at that. You're also going to find things like peelings. You also get to see the smoke. The water one is just super nice. The way that this just handles the geometry, the fact that this geometry are pre-sculpted, you know, we're not getting some mushed up geometry or, or pixel points. These are not geometries that are being voxelized. These are full blown sculpted geometries that the AI thinks of and generates. I think the whole idea of all of these samples is to push the boundaries and see the limits of what this AI can create. And it is doing an excellent job. So the draping on these clothes is looking nice. Going all the way down, you can see we have the piano. We just have like lots of, lots of nice things. For those who like to come through and check out these things and feast their eyes on these amazing beautiful stuff, it's worth knowing that this gets updated almost every single minute of the day. You just need to come through and check out some of the crazy, phenomenal, amazing, breathtaking things that AI is creating. This is going to change 3D model creation and might potentially change the way 3D artists start making things now and in the future. So if you're a 3D content creator, you definitely need to start positioning yourself properly and start thinking about how you can use tools like the Dream Fusion to scale up and also do some very interesting things for yourself. So this is more like it. For those who like to come through and take a look at this, let's actually refresh this and see if it has updated some more stuff. All right, so it has more stuff coming in. So for those who like to take a look at these, you want to grab the 3D models, you want to check out some of the nice things that this is creating as it's just a fantastic sight to behold. Then links to this is going to be in the description and links to other stuff is also going to be in the description. So do well to check them out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.